It's a typical Saturday at the mall. You're trying on new jeans. Let's see. Slim cut or relaxed fit. Stone washed or dark. At work on Monday, your boss asks you to research and recommend a notebook computer for the entire sales staff by Friday. That night in criminal justice class, you're reminded that you have a term paper due, comparing organized crime in modern Italy, Japan, and Russia. Hmm, busy week. The act of comparing and contrasting is basic to our lives at home, at work, and at school. In these examples, comparing and contrasting is being done for purposes such as making a decision, solving a problem, or finding an answer. When writing this type of essay, it's important to avoid comparisons and contrasts that do not serve a purpose. Therefore, when writing this type of paper, one of your first important tasks is to determine what purpose the comparisons and the contrast will serve. Consider this example. Dumb or just illiterate? Two essays about the Internet. Let's say you've been asked to write a compare and contrast essay about two articles. Is Google Making Us Stupid? by Nicholas Carr and Three Tweets for the Web by Tyler Cohen. Both essays discuss the same topic, the effects of the Internet on our intelligence. So, the potential list of similarities and differences is long. But, what purpose will the list serve? This is where the thesis comes in, the overall point you wish to make as you conduct a compare or contrast analysis. For our example, your purpose could be to assure readers that the Internet does not pose a danger to their IQ or emotional stability, to teach the fearful how the Internet can benefit their lives, to satirize fears expressed by parents, teachers, and experts, about the so-called declines caused by the Internet. Once you have a clear thesis, then and only then can you go about the important task of outlining your essay as you select and arrange details that allow you to achieve your writing purpose. In order for the reader to believe that you're balanced in your treatment of the subjects, it's important that you follow the rules of fair play. Rule number one. When analyzing your subjects, use the same criteria for each. If you talk about attention span, information literacy, and brain rewiring for the first essay, you must also discuss those same three criteria for the second essay, in the same order. Rule number two, don't try to tilt the outcome. It's fine to have a preference, but it's not fine to omit or puff up information. Conduct the comparison in a balanced, objective manner, and let the facts speak for themselves. Rule number three. Recognize that any comparison will produce both similarities and differences. What you write should reflect, to some extent, this reality. So, for example, if your paper will focus mainly on the differences between the two essays, you could perhaps begin by first pointing to a similarity between the two. You find these fair play rules at work in the two arrangements most often used in compare-contrast essays, the subject-by-subject -subject pattern and the point-by-point -point pattern. The subject-by-subject -subject pattern focuses on each subject, one at a time. For example, after an introduction paragraph that provides the thesis of the comparison, the two essays are discussed separately. Note that the same criteria are used for each essay in the same order. A point-by-point -point pattern, on the other hand, provides a side-by-side -side analysis of the two essays. Note that the same criteria for discussion now have their own paragraphs, attention span, information access, and brain rewiring. Also note that Is Google Making Us Stupid always comes first in the discussion, 
followed by three tweets for the web. The pattern you choose, subject by subject or point by point, depends on two factors, length of the paper and complexity of the subject matter. A subject by subject approach provides a strong overview and simple organization. However, in a more complex analysis, the point by point approach helps to keep both subjects in clear view and makes technical analyses more understandable by breaking them down point by point. Finally, don't forget the key transition words and phrases that you will need as you weave back and forth in your analysis. Likewise, in comparison, in contrast, on the other hand, however, on the contrary, and many more help your reader follow along as you navigate between the topics in your compare and contrast essay.